each one of your numbers before we start. And we'll talk about an alternate method to that. But I'm going to name this as my x value. We can clearly see this is an x, this is a y, this is an x, this is a y. It's an ordered pair. But I'm going to call this x1 and its partner y1. And I'm going to call the second pair x2 with its pair y2. And so based on what they did up above, the change in y, I'd start with the second y value, which is 6. I'm going to subtract the first y value, which is negative 3. But let's not confuse that negative with the minus that's already there. So negative 3. And long time ago, we talked about keep, change, change, or add a line, change the sign. So this is going to be 9. And now we're done with that. Now we're going to go on to our x values. So our first x value is negative 1, and, the, and we have to subtract. We're finding the difference or the change, and I'm going to subtract 5, the x1. So negative 1 minus 5 would be negative 6. And so if I write this, we're going to be able to reduce it if I write 9 over 6, and I put that negative sign out front because only one of them is negative, we could write that a couple different ways. We could reduce it to 3 over 2 because you can divide both of them by 3, which is preferable. We prefer to write it this way and keep it in slope-intercept form. We could also reduce it and write it this way, but because we're on a graph, we really want to know a horizontal, excuse me, a vertical change and a horizontal change. So we choose to keep it in fraction or ratio form. So let's try this again, and then number three, we're going to talk about something different you might be able to do. So let's help ourselves by labeling x1 and y1. And this is x2, and this is y2. So we're going to start with our change in y's. And my y2 is the number 8. Then I have to subtract, so I'm finding the difference between, and that y1 is 1, so that would be 7. And now we're going to go to our change in our x value. So we start with our second x value minus our first x value and that is negative 3. So the slope or the change that we're looking for would be 7 over negative 3, but since one of them is negative, we're going to put it out in front. And we could reduce this to 2 and 1 third, but we prefer not to do that. We like to keep it in ratio form. All right, and, but however, if, if you want to use it for comparison purposes and you want to change it to a mixed number, that is fine. So now let's talk about number three. It's sometimes awkward to always use the, the x1 and the y2, the, or excuse me, the x2 and the y2 first. It, it feels counterintuitive. And we can, if we'd like, choose to move them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it both ways and show you. If I wanted to just take the first x value and call this, for instance, we called this the second one. We called this the second one. We decided that this is the first one and, and this is the first y. This would work as long as we keep the, these both the same, as long as your this ordered pair both have twos and this ordered pair both have ones, it's okay to do that. So in this case, we would start with 4, because we're calling it y2 right now, and we would subtract negative 2, because we're, we're working with y's. And add a line, change the sign, we get 6. And if we did the same thing with our x's, again, we're calling this one x2. So that would be 1, and we're calling this one x1. So we're going to subtract 7. And this would give us negative 6. So we have negative, we have a positive and a negative. So we have 6 over negative 6. But I'm going to put that negative sound out, out front. And this could also reduce to negative 1. 
So let me go back now and do it the more traditional way. It, it doesn't really matter, and let's prove that it doesn't really matter which ordered pair you refer to as the second ordered pair and which one you refer to as the first ordered pair. It's sometimes easier for students to use this first in their uh, at the beginning because that's what they see first but you might go ahead and like the traditional formula so let's erase this and let's talk about if we're see if we're going to get the same answer if we label it the traditional way traditional way says this is x1 this is y1 that's what we see first this is x2 this is y2 that's the ordered pair we see second so according to the formula we'd start with negative 2 we would subtract 4 those are both the y's, the change in the y's. And I would get negative 6. And then I would start with the x2, which is 7, and I would subtract the x1, which is 1, and I would get positive 6. So this time, I have a negative 6 over a positive 6. However, it's still, one of them is still negative, so we'd put the negative sign out front. So that would still be negative 1. So I'd like you to decide whether you're going to call the first ordered pair 1's and the second ordered pair 2's and use the formula as given, which means you always start with the second ordered pair for both the, the y and the x value, or if you'd rather call this the second pair. Now, it has to be, again, both of the numbers in, in whatever pair have to have the same number. They either have to be both 1s or they have to both be 2s. So let's try one last one together, and then I'm going to have you complete the rest of them. Okay? I'm going to go the traditional route. I'm going to call this x1 and y1. I'm going to call this x2 and y2. It's completely up to you which way you prefer to do it. So I'm going to look for the y2 first. It's 9 minus the y1, which is 4, and that gives us 5. Now I'm going to go to the x2, which is 2, minus the x1, which is negative 6. Remember, don't, don't confuse the minus and the negative. When we have minus a negative, it's like adding a positive, and we have 8. So our slope would be 5 over 8. They're both positive, so we get to keep it that way. So please continue to do the next on four on your own, and thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.